Uh, well, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to. Well, it's kind of like a Sonic talk special. I'm not. I don't know. We haven't decided what to call this, but Yoad has very kindly, as we're, as we're all in self isolation, has decided uh, to give us a bit of his time and uh, show us a, kind of the insides of some of the inner workings and maybe some uh, technique stuff. And today we're going to have a look at. Um, sort of the how reverbs work. Uh, Yoad, of course, you will see on Sonic Talk regularly. Uh, he's there in his studio in Nevo Sound in London, under lockdown. Um, a perfect time for this kind of thing. How are you doing, Yoad? You all right? Yeah, and a good place to, to be locked um, at, <laughs> yes, I have that's to true. say. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of myth about reverbs, about algorithm reverbs, about, about IR reverbs. Uh, plate reverbs and all that. So today we're going to talk about algorithm, algorithmic uh, reverbs and how they work. Basically, they all work in the same way, more or less. Obviously, there are different designs. Um, the, the main thing is that a reverb is actually a bunch of delays. Uh, and we can show that by using quite an old uh, plugin um, from Logic. Uh, it's a stock plugin. Uh, it's now under the legacy kind of um that category. was because it was it was wasn't it it was silver <laughs> there was silver uh there it was, was silver gold and platinum yeah yeah so this is the best uh, it had to offer that's the, the best <laughs> of the time that's like i don't know 20 years ago or something like that even then there were better reverbs but logic were basically focusing on making uh, an amazing platform in its own right you know right. so the, the uh, although they have very good plugins but that wasn't the focus at the time anyway but this allows us to have uh, a peek into what's going on under the hood of of uh, this process so if we listen we have just an 808 rim shot sound here and now if i turn on the reverb in its most basic settings so what what you would be able to hear is a delay with feedback, so kind of like an echo. That's and exactly then the if like, I, yeah. yeah, and then if I increase the reverb time, that's basically the feedback. So it's feeding back to itself. You can, you can hear that there's a minute delay. So there's a bit of latency, so therefore it doesn't accumulate like an analog delay or like a dedicated digital delay. So that's a slightly different different architecture. So you can hear that it kind of spreads uh, in time um, or drifts in time. Now, what we can then introduce is the diffusion. What the diffusion does is basically it uses an all-pass filter or a bunch of uh, array of all-pass filters to basically to dis distort the phase response of the signal. So if we had a clear impulse or a clear transient, it will not stay the same anymore. So the, because of the phase and the fact that the timing kind of drifts over uh, different frequencies, you'll, you'll, you'll have a smearing, smearing of that transient um, and let's hear what that would sound like. This will sound more familiar because it will start sounding more like a reverb. So you can hear that the... That sort the of click... softening the delays, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if I increase that more, you get something which is starting to sound like a not very well acoustically treated bathroom or something like that. Hmm. Um, and if I increase the feedback, I get something which is quite ringy and resonant. And resonance, uh, resonant. Um, so you can hear that's just which, sort of messing with the delays, effectively, to kind of try and yeah, smear so, them so, into more authentic. Yeah, not thing. not the time, but just the feedback and the diffusion. So that already starting to sound sound a little bit like a, a reverb. Now, what we can also do then, if you think about it, we have a delay line. The delay line is the amount of samples we store in memory, but then, so we can delay them in time, but then we can access different points in time of the same delay. So by using one delay line, we can actually have multiple delay times of the same signal. 
Uh, and then we can decide which one of them will get fed back to the input. And since it's a stereo processor, so which one of which channel will get cross-fed to the other channel. So mm -hmm. then we create kind of a, a, a mess, basically. And let's hear what that sounds like. And that will start sounding like a proper reverb now. You can hear how, like, there's a, there's a kind of sweet spot here with, where you can really hear the individual taps and how they bounce back between the different right. channels and the different delay times. And the more I increase the density and the diffusion for that matter. So now it doesn't sound like individual reflections anymore, but it sounds like a reverb tail. And if you think about it, if you stand in a cave and you clap your hand, then you will get millions of individual discrete reflections, but you'll get one reflection from here, but you'll get another one from like one millimeter to the left and then one, you know, so you'll get them at nearly the same time coming back to your ear, but since they will be, they will be diffused basically. And now if you think about these um, reflections going back and bouncing back from the other wall and and so forth so we get millions of million and millions of discrete diffused um reflections right. which sound so, like, they're, like they're, they're sort of individuals so that i mean the trick is i guess because i mean essentially what we're talking here is kind of psychoacoustic we're trying to fool the ear into thinking that we're hearing a space so the algorithm Absolutely is key, you know, that, I mean, there are classic algorithms, aren't there? You've got the uh, AMS and, you know, lexicons, and they have their own special mm -hmm. source of how they make and presumably waves as well. But this is algorithmic, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. This is algorithmic because it's made of uh, basically a series of, uh, it's a signal path that goes through delay, through uh, an all pass filter, a delay line feeding back to itself in different kind of um, configurations. On top of that, so so if you listen to the to this as a reverb, it sounds nice. It sounds very pure, clean, and kind of boring, in a way. Yes, it's not um, modulating. <laughs> it's it's not modulating, true. But even before before that, what you get is, so if you think about it, if you still in that cave and and you clap, then you would hear a very, um, you very tight reflection coming back from the floor right. and maybe the ceiling or maybe a wall that is very uh, you, you're standing next to so these are the early reflections now these early reflections are more discrete in nature because if you if you're you're standing here and you clap your hand then you'll get pretty much one loud one which will right. be smeared obviously because it's not a, a, an infinite point of surface that reflects back and that will be will make it completely discrete but it's more like again it's a diffused uh, reflection so um let's listen to what this sounds like so now we're hearing only the early reflections so you can hear there's again there's a bunch of delays they're much much tighter together and if you can hear the because they're not much diffused, if you would have them equally spaced in time, then you will hear a filter. You will hear like a metallic kind of ring. Mm. So they're actually arranged in a pattern, which you can hear. Maybe if I... Yeah, so you can hear the individual right, so this reflections. Is a randomness There's probably it, right, about yes. eight of, or, of them or something. And then I can change the room shape which changes this pattern, creates it, uh, and there's, a, there's an element of, basically what you want to try to avoid is having something serial, because then it will start to ring, so you want to have it kind of as random and as possible. And also, These I are... mean, the, the human ear is very, very sensitive to uh, repet repetition, Rep isn't it? So yeah. you want to try, exactly. yeah. Because we're trying to, to find frequency in in any in any signal so now if so we have this engine and we have the tail engine and then we can listen to a bit of both 
but you can hear that it's still they don't gel well together again this is this is a very very basic reverb if we go uh, a few years later in time um, to the true verb wave true verb which is also a very very old uh, plugin then what we can do is we can listen only to the early reflections so here you can hear there's a bit more of them and that's why it's harder to get them not to resonate uh, and here we have different shapes again and the room size is basically the timing ah, okay the relative timing of them all so here they are a little bit more diffused already uh, than on the platinum river but then what we can do is if we turn on the reverb we'll just listen to the reverb so that's a very kind of pure and yeah, that's, clean. that's nice and smooth. Yeah, that's that's nice and smooth. Let's make it. Yeah, but then we can say, okay, we want the early reflections to be mixed with the input and sent to the reverb tail. Right. So then we have something which is which is you can hear that the tail is is more thick kind of in the beginning because right. it has the early reflections which are diffused but then they go into the tail as well and mix and that makes it a little bit more kind of um just sounds more natural you know. i suppose i mean i know it's because you haven't got the the direct early reflections are turned down in that so that's just sending the that's reflections just and in. then and then we can then we can um then we can mix the discrete early reflections back in and that will give a sense and the direct yeah because this is fully wet so if we bring the source back in then you can start hearing something like that we can start hearing without the early reflections and without them going to the tail the tail will be very kind of milky mm. and smooth with the direct with the direct with the early reflection going into the tail, it's a little bit more thicker, and then we can have them in the mix as well. So that that basically creates something which is a little bit more believable, because you, if you put it on a vocal track or something like that, you would you would hear. Obviously, you'll have the direct signal, and then you will have the early reflections, which will give you a sense of space where the where the person is located because it will sound like a room because you'll have early reflections from the floor from the walls so it's it won't be kind of floating in space it will give you a sense of realism and then you can have the tail on top which will give you that lush kind mm. of um reverb so, so tail. I, I, i'm curious i mean do you tend to gravitate more towards in your own work towards algorithmic or impulse response type reverbs um Usually, you'll find more flexibility and more tweakability on an algorithmic reverb because you have all the parameters. Obviously, there are many, many more parameters behind the, the scenes which are not um, revealed to the user. But when we design plugins, we have so much control and we can basically, if we wanted to, have a reverb with like a 100 parameters or something like that, and you can really t tailor it and tweak it uh, to will, but that would be impossible to operate. So, so we then pack a lot of different controls and have control laws and things like that and pack them into one thing hmm. uh, that is called uh, variation or early reflection shape or things like that, which actually right. pack they change quite a, a lot, lot of things. Yeah. So yeah. what's I mean what's the what's the CPU hit like for kind of algorithmic reverbs generally speaking? I mean, can you go really over the top? I mean, can you make something that would eat everything up or is there a certain point where it makes no difference anymore? Um, you know, it's in the old days it would be it was very heavy to run a reverb in a session. 
these days, you know, if you think about the fact that it's only a bunch of delays and there's no shortage in, uh, in, in memory, um, usually for something like that, and it doesn't take much and it's, and it's very efficient because it's a technology, a technology that has been used for, for decades. Um, so it's, it's not too hard to, to make something like that, which won't take too much power from, from the computer. Um, I have to mention that you then add modulation. You can add amplitude modulation and frequency modulation or coercing or something like that to the reverb to make it sound even more lush and more kind of moving. You know, sometimes... That, so the, those sort of shimmer reverbs and the sort of thing that we're used to hearing a lot, you know, in ambient works, and it seems to be making a big, a big kind of... Is mm -hmm. that based on algorithmic reverb generally? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Um, yeah, because, you know, with a whole feedback system and you can manipulate it and you can do all sorts of things to the signal on the way between the output and it feeding back to the input. So you can filter it, you can modulate it, you can change the, the timing of it with something like uh, vibrato or, you know... Um, simple flanger or basically an LFO on the delay time um, on the feedback because the feedback can go through a different delay line. So you, you can have a lot of manipulations added to this simple process, but it, it won't take a lot of power because it's not much in today's, uh, you know... Um, yeah, Days well, now numbers. we've got most, most computers. I mean, our phones could probably do a pretty decent reverb, totally, algorithmic reverb. Totally. Or Actually, in my, in my phone, I have something on the playback system, which is like whole or something, and there's a reverb right there, and it doesn't even, uh, yeah. you know, Brilliant. Uh, take, take much at all. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you very much. That's fascinating. My pleasure.